I've got this theory that Shadow of the Colossus is actually a narrative that explores some of the themes and ideas of the teleological suspension of the ethical. But what is the teleo... teleo... tele of ethics thing GGTV? Well, it's an idea put forward by this philosopher here whose name is really difficult to pronounce so let's just call him Kirky Lad. Now Kirky was a little bit of a downer in some ways, as all philosophers sort of are, and was super obsessed with death and anxiety. He literally invented the word angst, which means if he was alive today, his favourite Star Wars character would be Anakin Skywalker. Anyway, Kirky Boy's obsession led to a particular fascination with the Binding of Isaac. Not the good one, the Bible one. In this story, there's this fella called Abraham who prays to God and he's all like, Yeah, God, I prop I want a son like. Reckon you could do this lad a favour and bring him a son into this world. And God's just like, aye aye, sound mate, boom, your wifey's pregnant now. So Abraham and his wife have this kid Isaac, but sometime later when Isaac grows up, God speaks to Abraham and he's like, hey Abraham, remember me, your pal Big G, how's that day, how's that son holding up, working out, working out well for you, yeah? And Abraham's like, aye God, he's class mate. I love him more than anything else in the world. He's the greatest gift you ever could have given me. And God's like, uh, this is awkward. Uh, listen, Abraham, mate, just putting it out there, but would you mind, you know, if it's not too much of an inconvenience, tying him to a post and um, murdering him? Abraham thinks, nah. Nah, I'll, I'll pass that one up if you don't mind, God. But the big G is just like, all right, I'm going to make this clear. Me asking was kind of just a formality. I'm going to just need you to slaughter your son, if you could do that for me. That'd be great. And uh, I am God, so, you know, you kind of have to. So to make a long story short, Abraham, despite adoring his son to bits, goes to kill him. And then at the last minute, God sends down an angel who is all like, Hey, Abraham, God was just pulling your leg, man. He was just checking you loved him. You don't really have to kill your son. He'll settle for this goat. It's like the Bible equivalent of MTV's punked. Now going back to our boy Kirky, he loved this story. So much so, he actually wrote it again and explored different outcomes and what they meant in a book called Fear and Trembling. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the content of fear and trembling, but the basic principles he put forward are this. There's two levels of moral existence. The ethical, which are the temporary moral standards set by the society you live in. You know, those unwritten rules of moral obligation that say nitpicky things like don't fucking murder your children. And there's the universal, which is another level of right and wrong that sits untethered by the temporary judgement of societal perception. An almost divine level that isn't even necessarily bound by such base logic as right and wrong. In this instance, Kirky used God's sudden deciding that killing your kid was all well and cool as an example of this universal level. So this Kirky fella then expands on those notions of ethical and universal by suggesting that what happened when Abraham was prepared to kill his son was a teleological suspension of the ethical. Abraham was able to, in that moment, untether himself from the moral standards of society that say all these cruel things like don't cross the road when the stop sign is on, don't wear mismatched socks, don't brutally murder your firstborn son, and ascend to a level where these ethics didn't matter through his faith in God. And for doing so, he was rewarded by getting the son he never thought he'd have the first time a second time. Which brings us to Shadow of the Colossus. Now I'm going to do some face swapping here. Let's say Wanda, our protagonist, is Abraham. His dead girlfriend Lady Mono is Isaac, whose life will be his reward should he reach the Universal. The Colossi represent the murder the protagonist has to carry out and the ethical moral dilemma that comes with such murder. Dormin is God and the tribe that try to stop you towards the end of the game are society. There's actually a surprising amount of parallels in these roles straight off the bat. Dormin, the weird voicey god thing at the start of the game, straight up uses his divine intervention to tell you to kill just as God did to Abraham in The Binding of Isaac. Now, within the realm of games, being asked to kill is kinda no big deal. 
I mean, it's like that other old philosopher no one remembers called Jack Thompson once said, gamers are all a bunch of murderous psychopaths or something. Well, this sentiment kind of rings true in Shadow of the Colossus, because whereas other games will contextualise violence through cartoon-like fantasy nonsense, the scenario of war, or even just the logic of they are the bad guys, Shadow of the Colossus instead just chooses to make you a dick. I'm not the first one to point out that by killing the Colossi, you're an absolute evil bastard in this game. At least by Kirky Lad's interpretation of society's ethical standards. I mean, I, some of these guys are twats. That raging arsehole with a beard can fucking do one. Glad I killed this prick. But then a lot of these Colossi are totally passive. Look at this bird. He just minds his own business till you decide to hoi an arrow in his gut. And even then he only comes down to nudge you a little as if to say, pack it in, please. And then this little fella here won't hurt you unless you come into his home. And when you do attack him, you fucking scare the shit out of him. Look at him, man. He's terrified of you as you approach him with that fire. All of his body language is screaming, mate, mate, please, divent. But nah, but nah. You don't care. You aren't bound by the ethical. Your love for that dead lady of yours has driven you past all comprehension of basic societal morals, and you've reached the universal, so you don't think twice about backing this poor little critter off the side of a cliff. You're on a mission from God. Admittedly an evil sounding God that constantly says if you do this the price will be high, as if to say, look mate, I can bring back your lass, but you're gonna see some real bad shit, aye? But hey, at least he's honest. Let's look at Dorman actually as an allegory for God. Dorman never actually does anything evil in this game. He's feared for sure, that's why he's locked away in the sanctuary, but then again God's feared. That's where the phrase, the fear of God comes from. And I, he takes over your body at the end and uses it to smash buggers about, but they're shooting him with arrows and shit. And to be fair to him, he did tell you the price of bringing back your lass would be high. Speaking of your lass, he does keep his promise and brings her back from the dead, which is the sole thing you sought out to do. He rewards you for your actions in choosing to suspend all the ideas of the ethical as set in place by this tribe who made the area forbidden and locked Dorman away in the first place. He rewards you with the one thing you wanted from this whole journey. Just as in the story of Binding of Isaac, God rewarded Abraham with the life of his son for being willing to kill, Wanda is rewarded with the life of a loved one for the exact same willingness. Hell, even your bestie Agro the Horse turns out to still be kicking around after a supposed death scene tempts your faith in your own actions. So at the end of the game, for being a complete arsehole and committing to murdering 16 innocent animals, you win? Yeah, you kinda do. And you're probably thinking, well that's a bit cynical, innit? The guy selfishly motivated by love who displays nothing but a determined merciless murder spree gets off lightly at the end? Whereas the tribe, who are only trying to uphold basic moral standards, take on a load of casualties? And to a certain extent, yeah, it is cynical. But if you think about it differently, look at what this story is saying about love. Kirky argued that through faith in God, humanity could ascend to a greater level of existence. That this extreme surrender to theology abolished the restraints put on you by the petty standards of whatever the masses at the time thought was okay. As he put it, to have faith is to lose your mind and to win God. Now, Fumita Oida, the creator of Shadow of the Colossus, seems to agree with this to an extent, but it seems like he is suggesting it's not a religious faith that allows an individual to ascend to a universal level, but love. If we assume that it was not Abraham's fear of God that granted him the willingness to kill his son, but rather his unconditional love of God, then we could also argue that Wanda's love of the dead girl Mono is what strips him of the notions of right and wrong. Oida seems to suggest that love is more important than all, that love is bigger than such matters of right and wrong. He doesn't seem to ask us to judge Wanda for what he does. At no point does he suggest an alternate agenda for the protagonist. And at no point do we question Wanda's actions as a hero because we as human beings can get behind the notion that we do anything for the ones we love. Love isn't evil. That's not what this game is trying to say, otherwise it would punish Wanda for his actions. Sure, his decisions turn him into a baby at the end, but that's a reward of a second life when you think about it. One where he's raised by the very woman he saved in a motherly loving way. Sure, the horns he's now marked with could be said to symbolise evil, but it's only evil as determined by the tribe. Evil determined by the standards of the ethical, if you will. 
If anything, it could be that the horns represent the universal, and that's why, in Eco, the protagonist of that game set in the same universe is abandoned by his village for having them. He isn't evil, not even remotely. He's just a symbol of something the village, or the ethical, don't understand. And if we look at Eco, guess what the main driving factor for that protagonist was? Oh yeah, love. Again, love isn't evil. Think about your mother. Think about your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your brother, your sister, whatever. Their lives don't mean more than the lives of the rest of the world, but you know what? To you, they do. This is a game about absolute love. I mean, look at the way it's structured. There is nothing to do in this game except murder Colossi in the pursuit of saving Mono. In other games, with loving relationships, there's always distraction. Remember that really sad scene in Final Fantasy VII where Aeris dies? Remember how you didn't wait till you finished crying before you then went snowboarding? This game doesn't have that because Wanda isn't tied to the petty distractions of worldly existence. He isn't restricted by the tethers of right and wrong. He's on another level. He has felt love and from the moment he experienced it, he knows that love is more important than anything else life has to offer. Sure, you can argue in this instance, love is selfish. But you can also argue that this is about more than selfishness. That selfishness is merely a way to label the bad things we do in pursuit of love, because as Kirky would put it, we're living in the ethical and we don't understand the universal. Oida seems to suggest that love is above the ethical, that love is unbound by the ethical, that love is the universal. Hell, I would even suggest that what Oida is saying here is that love is the true meaning of life. And for a game about murder, that's kind of a nice thought. So if you listen to this, thanks for sticking through with that. This is my second recent attempt at this kind of video essay style content. Don't worry, an X-Men review is on its way shortly, but once again, I'd like to know what you think. Did this style of delivery improve on the last more serious tone I had in the Uncharted video? Are video essays something you'd like me to keep doing? Let me know. As always, if you want to support the channel, please like and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you next video.